Welcome to Logical Magic Videos of Medha. We believe that the real magic lies in the stories that people have been telling each other since the beginning of humanity. Out of them, some story writers have told such amazing stories that after listening or reading to them, we are transported into a different logical and a magical world. I will tell you some wonderful such stories on this channel and these stories will be told in both Hindi and English language. If you also like to listen, tell, read and write stories like me, then you can follow this channel. Today, we will listen to the popular story Atma Ram written by the most celebrated writer of the Indian subcontinent Prem Chand. You can also read this story here. A novelist, a story writer and a dramatist, Prem Chand has been referred to as the Upanya Samrat in literary world. His works include more than a dozen novels and around 300 short stories. Several of his short stories and novels have been made into films and TV series. He also worked as screenplay writer in Mumbai film industry for some time and there is lot we can learn from his stories. In Vedo village, the goldsmith Mahadev was a well-known man. He could be heard tapping at his smithy in his veranda from morning till evening. People had grown so much used to hearing this sound that if for some reason it stopped, it would seem as if something had gone missing. It was his daily routine to carry the cage of his parrot, Atmaram, every morning to the pond while singing a bhajan. To a stranger, the sight of his emaciated body, toothless mouth and bent back in the misty light of the morning could easily be mistaken for that of a ghost. However, the moment people heard the chant of Sat Gurudat Shivdat Data, it had the effect of a thought throw and they immediately understood that it was morning. Mahadev did not have a happy family life. He had three sons, three daughter-in-laws and dozens of grandchildren. But there was no one who would lighten his burden. The son said, while the old man lived, they should enjoy life and make merry, as after him they would anyway have to submit to the yoke of work. Poor Mahadev would sometimes even go without food. At meal times, there would be such a hue and cry for one's share of food that he would stand up without eating anything and go off to smote away his coconut shell hutta, which would make him go to sleep. His professional life was even more strife-ridden. Even though he was skillful at his work, his processes were rigorous and his chemical procedures painstaking. He still had to put up with the harsh words of suspicious and impatient customers. However, Mahadev would hear them out with an unmoved profundity, with his head bent at work. As soon as the quarrel subsided, he would just turn his head towards his parrot and say aloud, Sat Durudat Shivdat Data. The chanting of this mantra would fill him with utter peace. Once, by chance, a boy opened the door of the cage and the parrot flew out. When Mahadev raised his head to look at the cage, his heart stopped. Where did parrot disappear? He looked at the cage again, but parrot was no longer there. Alarmed, Mahadev rose and started looking for it over the tiled roof. If there was anything he loved in the world, it was this parrot. He was quite fed up with his sons and grandchildren. The playfulness of boys hindered his work. He had no love left for his sons. Not because they were good for nothing, but because of them he would be deprived of his daily quota of litter. Neighbors irritated him too as they would take away fire from his furnace. If there was any solace from this impediment, it was this parrot. It did not trouble him at all. He was at an age when human beings desired nothing but peace of mind. The parrot had settled on a tiled roof. Mahadev brought the cage down and showed it to the parrot chanting, Come, come, Sat Gurudat Shivdat Data. However, by now, boys from the family and the village gathered and all of them started screaming and clapping. Even the crows were cowing incessantly. 
The parrot flew outside the village and sat on a tree. Mahadev galloped after him with empty cage in hand. People were surprised at his agility. It is not possible to imagine a more beautiful, livelier and a more emotional picture of a man chasing his enchantment. It was afternoon and the farmers were returning from the fields. They took it as an opportunity for some fun. Everybody loved to tease Mahadev. Some of them threw stones. Some of them clapped. The parrot took flight once again and came inside a mango orchard, far away from the place and perched at the very top of a tree. Mahadev too leapt like a frog behind it with empty cage in hand. By the time he reached the mango orchard, the soles of his feet were on fire and his head was spinning. As soon as he recovered and became alert, he lifted the cage again and began saying, Sat Guru Dat Shiv Dat Data. The parrot descended to a lower branch but looked at Mahadev sceptically. Mahadev understood that it was scared. He put the cage down and hid behind a tree. The parrot looked around and once assured, flew down to sit on the cage. Mahadev's heart somersaulted and he began to chant, Sat Guru Dat Shiv Dat Data, inching towards the parrot. As he reached out to grab the parrot, it eluded his grasp and flew away to sit atop a tree. This continued till evening. The parrot sometimes sat on one branch, then on another branch. Sometimes it would sit on the cage and sometimes peep in to look at the bowls at cage door where food and water is normally placed for him and then fly away. If the old man was incarnated desire, then the parrot was an embodiment of illusion. The battle between desire and illusion faded into the darkness. It was night and there was complete darkness all around. The parrot was hiding in the leaves, don't know where. Mahadev knew that the parrot could not fly anywhere else at night, nor will it be able to come inside the cage. Yet he did not budge from that place. Today he had not eaten anything for the whole day. It was well past dinner time and he had not even had a drop of water, but he was neither hungry nor thirsty. Without the parrot, life appeared meaningless, barren and lonesome to him. He worked day and night because it was his inspiration, while the other chores of life were a matter of habit for him. In performing these tasks, he would never know the slightest trace of feeling alive. The parrot was the only object that reminded him of his consciousness. Losing it was like the soul giving up the body. Mahadev, who was hungry, thirsty and tired since whole day, would doze off every now and then. But the very next moment he would jerk his eyes open and in the vast darkness his voice would be heard, pronouncing Sat Durudat Shivdat Data. It was past midnight when he was startled by the sound of some voices. He saw a dim lamp burning under another tree and few men conversing around it. They were all having chillum. The smell of tobacco made him restless and with a loud incantation of Sat Gurudat Shivdat Data, he made his way towards the men to share their chillum. However, just as deer bolt away at the sound of a bullet, all the men too ran away as they heard him approach. Mahadev began screaming, Hold on, wait! It suddenly struck him that they might be thieves and so he began shouting loudly, Robbers, thieves, catch them, get them! Thieves did not look back after this. As Mahadev went near the lamp, he found a rust blackened urn. His heart began to throb with anticipation. He put his hand inside the urn and found coins. He took one out and peered at it in the light of the lamp. Yes, it was a gold coin. He immediately picked up the urn, blew out the lamp and hid under the tree. From a respectable man, he had become a thief in that one instant. Then he began to fear, what if the thieves came back? 
and on finding me alone snatched away the coins he tucked few of the coins into his waist band then he used dried wood to remove soil from the ground and made several pits in it he filled these holes with coins and covered them with mud in his mind's eye mahadev beheld a different world now replete with desires and apprehensions even though the fear of losing the urn was still imminent the desires had begun their work a well constructed house was built a heavy bullion shop was opened the ties with kin and relatives were reestablished and all the materials for luxurious life were accumulated then he set off on a pilgrimage and upon his return a big ceremony was held with yagya and a feast for the brahmins After this a Shiva temple and a water well was built soon a garden was also added to the picture and every day he had started listening to holy books and stories sages and saints were venerated at his place suddenly it struck him if the thieves came back would he be able to run he decided to test himself by picking up the urn and ran wildly for 200 steps it seemed as if he had grown wings on his legs all his anxieties were laid to rest the night was spent weaving such dreams dawn broke the wind stirred and the birds began to sing at once mahadev heard sat durudat shivdat data ram ke charan mein chit lada this chant had been on mahadev's lips forever these words were pronounced by him a thousand times during the day but their deep religious sentiment had never touched his inner core Just as an instrument produces sound his tongue articulated these words meaninglessly and ineffectually his heart had been like a leafless barren tree and the gentle breeze of these words could not reverberate him but now this tree had sprung leaves and branches and with the air flow of these words he shuddered and resonated It was the time of sunrise and nature was steeped in a rosy hue at the same time parrot came down from the high branch with joined feet like a star that falls from the sky and came into its cage mahadev ran delighted lifted the cage and said come atmaram you gave me a lot of trouble but you have also made my life successful now i will keep you in a silver cage and gild it with gold the sound of god's praises started coming out of every particle in his body oh god how benevolent you are it had to be your infinite love or else how would a sinner and a fallen person like me to become worthy of your grace these pure thoughts caused an overflow of emotions and in reverential tones he spoke out sat guru dat shiv dat data ram ke charan mein chit lada he hung the cage in one hand clutched the urn in his armpit and set off for home it was not yet bright by the time he reached home and other than a dot he did not meet anyone and dots do not particularly care for coins he hid the urn in a large trough covered it well with coal and kept it in his cellar at daybreak he proceeded straight to the purohit's house the priest was at his prayer and in deep thought tomorrow i have to appear in court and i don't even have a single penny none of the noble men have even breathed so far at that very moment mahadev arrived at his doorstep the priest turned his face away from where did this inauspicious idol turned up don't know if i'll get even a grain of rice today he asked grudgingly what is it what do you have to say don't you know that it is the time for my prayers mahadev replied maharaj i plan to hold a satyanarayan prayer meeting at my home today the purohit was stunned and couldn't believe his ears a prayer meeting at mahadev's home was as extraordinary as him doling out arms for a beggar from his house he wanted to know what is the occasion mahadev replied nothing in particular i just felt like listening to the stories of gods the preparations began right from the morning the invitations were sent out to the neighboring villages there was to be a feast after the prayer meeting whoever heard this was filled with surprise 
how had this grass sprung up from the sandy soil? In the evening when everyone had gathered and the Pandit had enthroned himself, Mahadev stood up and addressed everybody in a loud voice. Brothers, my whole life was spent in deceit. I have lost count of how many I have deceived, how many times I termed the authentic as fake. However, now God has been kind to me and has provided me with an opportunity to wipe the smear of my name. I hereby declare to all of you that if anyone feels that I owe him something or have stolen something from his deposits or that I have converted his genuine goods into something spurious, he can come now and take back whatever is his due to the last penny. If by chance any person is unable to come today, then you people can go and tell him that from tomorrow onwards, till a month, as and when it is convenient, he may come and settle his account. There is no need for any proof or witness. A stunned silence ensued. Someone shook his head sympathetically. Didn't I say so? Someone asked disbelievingly, how does he plan to pay up? The total may come to thousands. One Thatur poured fun. And what about those people who are deceased? Mahadev replied, they would surely have surviving kin. However, at this time people did not have so much desire for recovery as much wanting to know how he had managed to lay his hands on such a huge amount of money. Nobody dared to approach Mahadev. These simple village folk did not know how to dig out skeletons from the closet. Moreover, nobody could even recall exactly how much Mahadev owed them, and the fear of claiming incorrectly on such an auspicious occasion was tantamount to committing the sacrilege. The most significant thing was that Mahadev's saintly gesture had a mesmerizing effect on them. Suddenly the Purohit said, If you remember, I had given you some gold for a necklace and you underweighed it. Mahadev agreed. Yes, I recall. And how much was your loss? The Purohit said, It couldn't have been less than 50 rupees. Mahadev took out two coins from his waistband and kept it in front of the Purohit. Comments were passed on the gluttony of the priest. This was cheating. If at all the loss could not have been more than a few rupees, he had extorted 50 rupees from the poor man. He did not even fear God. With such a poor conscience, how could he call himself a priest? Ram Ram. People began to regard Mahadev with something close to veneration. An hour passed and there was not even a single claimant among the thousands of people who were present there. Mahadev repeated the request. It seems as if you have forgotten your account. In that case, let the prayer meeting happen today. For a month I will wait for you and after that I will go on a pilgrimage. I request all of you brothers that you help me to redeem myself. For a month Mahadev waited for his creditors. He could not sleep at night because of the fear of robbers. He had stopped working. He had even given up alcohol. The holy men and other guests who came to his door were treated generously. His fame spread far and wide. Even the month passed by and not a single person turned up to claim anything. It now dawned on Mahadev how much goodness and right conduct was there in the world. The world was a bad place for evil people and good for the righteous. Fifty years have passed since this incident. If you go to Vedo village, you can see a golden urn from afar. It is placed at the door of Thatur Dwara. Adjoining it is a cemented pond where lotuses bloom in abundance. No one catches the fish in it and beside it is a huge samadhi. It is Atmaram's memorial, related to which many tales are prevalent. Some say that the bejeweled cage ascended to the heavens and some would say that it disappeared, reciting Sat Gurudat Shivdat Data. But the reality was that the moon-like parrot had been swallowed by a saturnine cat. People say that at midnight one can still hear the incantation near the pond. Sat Gurudat Shivdat Data Ram Ke Charan Mein Chit Lada Even about Mahadev there are many popular legends. 
the most accepted one is that after atmaram was venerated he set off for the himalayas with many ascetics and did not return from there he came to be known as atmaram thereafter please give us your review of the story in comment section below if you have liked the story in english you can also listen to the original story in hindi in previous video to watch more such videos please subscribe to this channel if you are a story writer too and want to make money from your original stories you can submit it in the story writing contest by filling the doodle form in the description box below for listening to the story completely thank you to all the story lovers in the world